vocabulary building. We're going to look at metaphors and similes. And I'm sure if I ask you, have you ever heard of metaphors and similes? Most of you will say, yes, you have. And it's, it will probably take you back to English class, literature class, or you know when you learned poetry, when you learned um, novels and prose and fiction, you might have heard, uh, you might have come across these terms, metaphors and similes. And for some of you, these are terms that you haven't really thought about since high school. Am I correct to say that? So for me, learning metaphors and similes brings me back to my high school days back in Manchester, where we had to study Shakespeare and all those things, you know. And that was the start of me appreciating the language even more. And of course, it helped build vocabulary, lots of new words and phrases. So that's the point of today's class. You're going to be learning lots of new words and phrases that hopefully you will use, hopefully you will find very useful in when you speak. Okay, we're going to be answering the following questions. Why should we learn metaphors and similes? You can find the answer to that as you reflect on what we're learning. And then how can we use metaphors and similes in writing and speaking? Right. As I've said, you'll be learning a lot of new vocabulary. Try to relate these new words to your experience. Okay. So what is a metaphor? And I'm sure many of you already know, but let's just go through and uh, refer to the Macmillan English Dictionary. It's a word or phrase that means one thing and is used for referring to another thing in order to emphasize their similar qualities. So we're comparing things basically, word or phrase compared to another thing that is similar. Take a look at these examples. The pirates dug up their buried treasure. So Jack Sparrow and his crew dug up their buried treasure. So that is a phrasal verb. That is not, that's a verb, but that is not a metaphor yet. Because that is literal. It means that he's, they're really digging up, right? As you can see in the picture there. Uh, they're probably using all sorts of um, you know, equipment to dig up their buried treasure. But this is when dug up is used as a metaphor, not in a literal sense. It's, it is a metaphor. The journalist dug up some interesting facts for her article. So dug up here is now a metaphor. Because she is not really digging in that sense, um, doing it, but it is that this word is now used as a metaphor. So it is a phrase that dug up, right? It's a metaphor. Now we'll explore how to understand metaphors. So what you have to do is you have to look for the key idea in the metaphorical word or phrase to connect the literal meaning and the metaphorical meaning. For example, let's listen to me as I read this first. Many common English words referring to responsibilities are metaphorical. In this case, the key idea is that having a responsibility is like carrying a load, carrying something really heavy. So the bigger the responsibility, the heavier the load. Let's take a look at some words in which we use um, this in a metaphorical sense. Okay. I have to bear the responsibility for this. So the word bear here is a metaphor for uh, to, to imagine responsibility as carrying something heavy. I have to bear. The responsibility was weighing on my mind. What do you imagine weighing? Weighing on my mind. That means it's heavy, right? The next one. I don't want to be a burden to you. A burden is also heavy. Okay, so what does it mean here? It means that the, these words actually are metaphorical and it's not, yeah, what is it? it's not obvious. If you don't understand it, you're like, you have to guess what does it mean, bear weighing on. But if you can see it as a metaphor, um, you will expand your mind a bit more to understand what these words mean. Are you with me guys? All right, so we're going to explore some more, of course. Okay, well, there's a picture there that um, I shall provide. Carrying heavy responsibilities, heavy. 
So many words are like this in English. Here's another example. The word illness is often used with words and phrases whose literal meanings are to do with fighting a war. So that's the beauty of English, the English language. So illness, it's got to do with fighting a war. So words are related like that. So a good diet will help your body fight disease. So fighting an illness is like fighting or being in a war, right? The virus attacks the immune system. Okay, got it? And if you have cancer, for example, or a person has cancer, she has to battle with it, right? She, she's battling cancer. That comes from the word battle. B-A-T-T-L-E. Again, it's about fighting a war. So that's how you expand your vocabulary. You can see the pattern in the English language. And we'll explore more of these later as we go through. So there's a concept called implied metaphor. And this, this is fun. This is when you compare something with something, but it's not that obvious. But it comes from the, the clue is in the word. So take a look at this one. The pregnant woman waddled into the delivery room. So waddling is when you walk like this, like a duck or a goose, walking like that. You know, when you've got really heavy, whatever pain in your stomach or your, you've got a thri a thri arthritis, how do you say that word? Yeah. You've got pain in your knees. Sometimes you walk like this. So what, is, what it's implying is that the pregnant woman is compared to a duck or a goose walking side to side like that. So this is, this is, uh, this is the funny thing about English. This is what we do with, with words. So have you guys heard of the word waddle, waddle before? Is that new? If it's new, write it down in your notebook and then you can see how you can use it. So make sure you're using it correctly. It's normally with people who's got some sort of pain. That's when they waddle, they walk like that. You don't walk like that for beauty purposes, okay? All right. You try. I'm going to give you some metaphors where you have to guess the animal based on the metaphors. These are basically, some of these are verbs, some of these are adjectives, where it is normally used to describe how animals behave. So I'll read it out loud and you can write in the chat, okay? Number one. Harry squawked when the teacher ordered him to detention. Harry squawked when the teacher ordered him to de detention. What animal comes to mind? Write in the chat. It's number one. Angrily, Sonia barked commands at her child. Number three. The paparazzi, so that's media, right? Circled over the young singer outside the restaurant. Number four. The hostess spent the entire party buzzing from table to table. So the same thing, all you have to do is just guess what animal uh, do is this person or human being or people being compared to. Okay, are you ready? Let's reveal the answers then. Harry squawked. squawked. Compares Harry to a bird. Yay. Number two, Sonia barked. Sonia is compared to a dog. Wait, that's the only animal that we say bark. The paparazzi circled. Okay, number three. Let's see. Anyone got this one? Vultures. Ooh, that's the answer. But um, hawk is acceptable as well. And um, I tested it out with my husband as well, and he said eagle. The hostess spent the entire party buzzing with bee, comparing the hostess to a bee or even a fly, but I would, I would say bee was more obvious than, than a fly. This is fun, I think, and for you, you can now explore, or whenever you read something, you can then look at that word and see, oh, where is it coming from, actually? Are we being compared to an animal? <laughs> But that's the beauty of the English language because it's more precise that way. And if you want to be a bit boring, you just use normal verbs and adjectives. And um, this is a quiz, a bit of a bonus for advanced students. And you may refer to mariawebster.com to help you if you want. 
what words can best replace these metaphors? If you just want to be straightforward, want to be, stri be straightforward. So instead of squawked, what would be the next best thing? I'll give you my guesses and you can try as well. So when I first tried to do this, I'm like, hmm, when squawked, I imagine like a bird squawk, you know, that sound. And I'm like, shrieking would be good. Um, but I wrote screamed instead. Could be shriek. Shriek, scream, yeah. What about number two? What do you think? When we say uh, Sonia barked, like a dog, basically, what would be the next best thing? Shouted, right? Anyone else got a different one? I wrote yelled. Yeah, could be shouted. And number three, oh, why did I say I wrote it already? I'm so sorry. Quick, <laughs> number three, when you're circling over the young singer, what can we, what can we use instead? I just imagine enclosed, you know, and going, going round like that, or just moving around. I couldn't think of another boring verb. And then number four, what would you use instead? Are you, I would say just moving. And that, that just doesn't sound as exciting as these uh, verbs that we've used here. You see it? It's more exciting, right? The power of metaphors. Now, Let's look at how animals, uh, no, sorry, how humans, people, uh, when, when human or people are being compared to something beside animals. So we could also compare them to inanimate objects. So let's take a look at this example. Wanda sailed through her exams in no time. Sailed compares Wanda to a sailboat. It's a good word as well sailed that means it's like successfully really fast so your turn what objects are suggested in these metaphors what do you think look number two at the party the men orbited the supermodel comparing men to what justin's smile radiated throughout the room compares justin's smile not justin justin's smile to what number four Philip's anger grew until it erupted. Compares anger to what erupted. The really great um, words here. To keep the peace, Alice steered away from confrontation. Compares Alice to what? So it's an object or a thing. Write them down if you've never used these words before. Make it part of your new vocabulary, your bank of containing all the words. Okay. Andy wound his way through the crowd to get a better view. Compares Andy to what? So he wound his way. So I've got, I'm going to show you my gesture like that through the crowd to get a better view. So not swim, but wound. Okay. So let me reveal the answers while you think about that. Okay. So for number one, Planets, yay, good. Justin smiles compared to the sun. Philip's anger, volcano, yes. Alice steered away, so it could be a car or a driver. And number six, oh, this is a hard one because it's a, a sort of plant, ivy or a vine. So interesting, interesting words here. All right. I have some more quizzes for you to try before we explore more vocabulary. Okay. I would like for you to guess the meaning. Are you guys ready? Guess the meaning of these metaphors. Okay. Oh, put a lid on it. Is it A, it's gonna get cold. B, stop it. C, watch out. Here's another example to put it into context. He angrily told them to put a lid on their complaints. Put a lid on their complaints. All right. So the answer is stop it. Okay. All right. Number two, we're going to do this together. So you have to write really fast. She was eclipsed by her rival, by her enemy, by her competition. Is it A, she was better than her rival? B, she was shocked by her rival? 
Lucy, she was outshone by her rival. So her rival's, you know, better than her. Not she's better than her rival. Which one? So here's another example from I take this from the dictionary. The economy has eclipsed all other issues during this election campaign. Okay, so what do you think? You just imagine what's happening during the eclipse and you can see the photo there. Clue there. Okay, so what's the answer, everybody? Yes, C is the answer outshone. Okay, good job, good job. This will all be plain sailing. Easy, difficult, or C, troublesome. The roads were busy as we drove out of town, but after that, it was plain sailing. A, easy, plain sailing. Okay, number four. I was thunderstruck by the news. Delighted, A. B, shocked. C, disappointed. Right, so another example would be, Ruth was thunderstruck when he pre presented her with an engagement ring. So it would be, shocked, B, yes. Wonderful, and we've got two more. She is always fishing for compliments. Okay, so fishing, is it A, asking for? B, desires for? C, desperate for? Okay, it would be, oh, this is getting a bit complicated for number seven. Okay, she's always fishing for compliments. She's always asking for compliments. So that's what it is. Because you are verbally, verbally saying it in this context, right? Not desires. Desire, yeah, but uh, in this context, fishing for, asking for it. And number eight, you better learn to toe the line. Toe the line? Is it A, be patient, B, control your temper, or C, obey orders? So another example, journalists who refuse to toe the line will have to be sacked. Okay, so this is more, I think this is easier. Yes, obey orders. Well done, well done. Okay, great. Yay. So I was just testing you to see how you're doing. Okay, wonderful. So that was about implied metaphors. I mean, it's was we were learning about some things that are not that obvious and we're comparing it with animals and some we're comparing with objects just now. So here's another concept that I want, uh, I want us to learn, which is called conceptual metaphors. Okay, and I'll explain metaphor boxes as well. So in an article by George Lakoff and Mark Johnson, I hope I said that name correctly, in the 1980s, they discuss how metaphors provide us with ways of thinking and ways of talking about things which are called conceptual metaphors. So it's in your, in your mind. And then this work has influenced the concept of metaphor boxes in Macmillan's dictionary. So just a brief background, how I came across um, Macmillan's dictionary on, in the website. I was looking for, as I was doing my research, I, I was like, is there a collection of metaphors that, that we can use in our business writing and speaking. And then that's when I came across metaphor boxes. So as I was doing research, I was also learning this wonderful resource, which I want you to explore later. Okay. All right. So this is what it looks like when you click on a particular link in the, in the dictionary, this link. And it looks like this. Okay. And this is very interesting. So bear with me as I explain. So metaphor boxes here, it's, it's compiled by the Macmillan Dictionary where it contains these words, very interesting words that if I click on it, it's going to go to an ent uh, in, the, in the dictionary, an entry with a definition, etc. And then below it, there's a metaphor for it. Like how do we use it? in a metaphorical sense. And I'm going to show you a lot of examples. Okay. Um, before that, I also want to note that idioms and similes are also included in the metaphor boxes when they show the same key idea as other words in the group. Okay. So let's take a look at some of these words. Uh, we have achieve, argument, conversation, discover, failure, so many more. Afraid, 
dishonest, interested, opportunity, responsibility, communicate, organization, difficulty, confuse, quantity. Okay, oh, very interesting. And you can explore this after you leave this class. You can explore this further so that you can uh, con continue to expand your vocabulary. So in the metaphor box, when you explore it on your own, you're going to see a topic that has two different groups of metaphors, each showing a different key idea. For example, the metaphor box at relationship shows that we think of relationships in two different metaphorical ways. So the word, the idea of relationship, you can think of it as a physical connection. For example, I was very attached to him, right? I was very attached to him. Or oh, my baby is so attached to me. My cats are so attached to me, they even go to the toilet with me. Right, that's a true story. Okay. She has split up with her boyfriend, split up. Again, it's like a physical connection, split up. And now they're no longer together, so they're no longer physically connected. So you've heard of this before. And sometimes it's in this category where you think of it as relationship as a temperature. Or the weather. So this is also interesting, and you have heard of this before. They greeted us warmly, so positively, the friendly, warmly. And it was a very stormy relationship. It's violent. Okay, the way the trial of Johnny Depp and Ember Heard went like, ooh, that was a stormy relationship. 